joining us here at Desert Wood Days. I am your host, Kathy Blaze, and we have some very amazing guests for you here today. Today, sitting on my couch, I have Mr. Carrie Keepers. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you. Glad to be here. Such a pleasure to have you. I have to ask, because I get asked this question quite often, is Kathy Blaze your real name? Is Carrie Keepers your birth name? Yes, I get asked that a lot. When I worked in radio, um, I met uh, Bill Austin, and the first day I was at uh, KEZ, he told me that was the coolest radio name he ever heard, and how did I come up with that? It is a cool name, <laughs> KK. I love the K. I do, too. <laughs> I used to take some guff when I was a kid, but I stuck with it. Good for you. I was looking at some of your, uh, your earlier material, and I saw Carrie all cool on a motorcycle. <laughs> yes. Tell us um, about that. Well, I kind of grew up that way. My father uh, was a Harley Davidson mechanic and I ultimately had his own uh, motorcycle shop. And so my brothers and I all had bikes and uh, I had uh, a 1977 shovelhead Harley Davidson mm -hmm. for about 24 years. Really? And I rode it a lot, but I finally reached a point where I was like, I think it's time to stop. It's so I time. traded it in on a horse. You traded in for a horse. I did. And that's where we're going to. What was it that inspired you to get into the film industry? It was almost accidental. Um, like I said, I was working in radio, and I met a gentleman, local icon here, a gentleman named Sandy Gibbons, Sanford Gibbons, and he did everything. And he kind of took me under his wing. Long story short, he mentored me and he helped me get my first agent. And I was doing background and, and you know, extras and commercials and things mm -hmm. like that. And over a period of time, um, I started getting speaking roles. Somewhere along the line, I, was, I got a phone call from a guy that was running things at Rawhide mm -hmm. Theme Park saying uh, that he needed some cowboys. And I had been doing some Western reenactments at that point. So I had some wardrobe and boom, that's what it took. And before I knew it, I was, I was, I remember the first time I got shot dead in the streets of Tombstone. I was laying on the street going, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> um, but then I, tr I started to transition into some film work and uh, uh, I worked in a, in a film called Hot Bath and Stiff Drink and I did the yes. sequel. I played the bartender and I got to meet some cool people, and it was great. That is awesome. So all of that, you immediately went into the Western genre of work right. because of, due to, raw, to Rawhide, pretty much. Yeah, circumstances. And, and, and what was it that you did at Rawhide? And for those, explain what Rawhide is for those young people that may not even know Rawhide. Rawhide is a Western theme park, and it's a, a historical thing for Arizona. Um, I... The first time I did any work for them uh, was a, a big event there, and I was hired by a local guy to run what was called a rodeo roper. So that was my first taste. It was just a little attraction thing. And uh, before I knew it, I was the, uh, the uh, volunteer coordinator there, and I got to hang out all four days. And I had a job there, but I got to meet all these Western actors that were all my hero when I was a kid. And it was incredible. So that was that was part of the transitory thing of it. Um, just moving along into that. Uh, it was it was amazing how one thing led to another. And it's not something that I had really set as a goal for myself. So um, have you always performed in the Western genre of work? No, I've done a lot of other stuff. Um, I got painted orange for a commercial once as a <laughs> as a, uh, a Denver Broncos fan. Okay. But no, I, I worked in a lot of other types of jobs. I, actually, as far as Western film, I've only done a, a, a couple, three of those. Okay. Okay. 
Because I always saw you as that go-to person when it comes to the Western, Western genre of work. I mean, um, you and a couple other guys. That it just seemed like they were always the type or the, the person that was in the genre of Western films. Mm -hmm. And I could be wrong about that, but I just always saw you as a, this cowboy. Something I've always <laughs> kind of leaned towards. Yeah. I remember it's... years ago on, on Halloween, um, my kids all dressed up. And so I had some rudimentary cowboy stuff and mm. I put that stuff on. Mm. So it was always kind of in the back of my head. I know, I know that you're, are you retired right now? Yes, ma'am. So do you find yourself, and I know I'm stuck on the Western theme. because it's okay. Do you find yourself more like a consultant in that area when people need help in that area of film work or? I've helped some people, but I really haven't done anything in that direction of any substance. Okay. And I know that you have a, a book that you're working on. Do you have a new book? Well, I, it, I finished it a couple of years ago. Can you tell us about your book? Yes. I actually didn't set out to write a book. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, I wrote a screenplay um, about 12 years ago, and that was almost an accident, too. I had won an award called the Spirit of the West Alive Award. And there were several other people that won it at the same time. I think there was five of us, including uh, Bobby G. Olson. Wonderful mm. woman. Anyway. Um, yes, she is. Yes, she's awesome. I was at a uh, actor's mixer. And I had a gentleman approach me and ask me if I was Carrie Heapers. And I said, yes. And long story short, they were looking to use me in a project that... Uh, um, was underway and I became part of that and they didn't have a script at the time so I offered to write a few scenes and and that's actually how Deadly Reckoning began. Well again the screenplay came first and we were in pre-production for the film and we were at one point and we had just finished location scouting and uh, my executive producer looked at me one day over dinner and says I want you to write the novel. Oh. I said, what? Writing a screenplay is one thing. Yes. Writing a book is something else entirely. But I took a year off, and um, I found that using the screenplay made it a whole lot easier to format the book mm. because I already had the outline. Right. All I had to do uh, was make it interesting. Right. And put your, um, your, your emotion behind it. and. Well, I had a really good editor <laughs> <laughs> who, who made all the difference in the world. Yes. That's awesome. So you brought us a copy of the book today. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Can you tell a little tell us a little bit about this? That's from a photo shoot. The picture was almost an accident. Um, <clears throat> I was doing a promotional photo shoot when I was working at Rawhide, and my photographer told me to put my long coat on. And so I picked up my long coat and I started putting it on, and she snapped three pictures, and that was mm -hmm. one of them. And, awesome. Uh, a man's journey to redemption. Truly. There's a, a message in the book. It's, it's a Christian message. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is truly about carry keepers? I don't know about that. Um, it's about a man, in, in a sense it parallels my life, but it's about a man who, uh, an Irish man, who lost everything. Yeah. Lost everything. And wandered off into the desert and became an outlaw hmm. and then met somebody who got him back on track. And the story is about what he needed to do to redeem himself, oh, okay. including a uh, confrontation with a very bad man that he used to ride with. Okay. Okay. Carrie, how long have you been in the film industry now? I'd say 20 years, maybe okay. 25 years. What advice would you give to a young actor that's wanting to start off in the film industry? Take as many classes as you can and get to as many auditions as you can. Mm -hmm. I, I taught acting for a number of years, and I love that more than anything else. Yes, yes. I got to see some amazing burgeoning talent as a teacher. Right. But, uh, yeah, you study. Get after it. You know, you're not going to make it happen by sitting down. 
Do you see any difference in the drive when you work with um, male actors versus female actors? Do you see any difference? I think the female actors are much more free as far as their expression. Um, especially young guys tend to bottle things up. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't want to sound um, opinionated, but I found it easier to work with women than men, mm. but that much. Okay, okay. So, you um, you have the um, the film. You have your your novel now. Mm -hmm. What's next for Kevin Carrie Keepers? Well, due to my vision, um, this is my last project. And once it comes to fruition, then I will enjoy the rest of my life with Lori and my Doberman and working on model airplanes, which is my hobby. Good for you. And Lori is? My lovely wife. Yes. And that she is. So it was such a pleasure having you here with us today. It was my pleasure and my honor. And you know what? I hope to see more of Carrie Keepers. Because one... Can. One thing I, I, I think I mentioned to you, my mother is visually impaired. And one thing that I told her is that, you know, God gave you a set of eyes, but he gave you a set of everything else. And I don't think that's going to stop you from doing what you want to do in life. No, I won't let it. Yes. So I ha I'm sure we're going to see more of Carrie Keepers. I hope so. Yes. And thank you for joining us today here at Desertwood Days. And we will catch you next time. Thank you.